The Legacy Experience has been brought to you in part by Sage, Cortland, Islander Precision Fly Reels, Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. Today's show will be targeting inshore pocket kelp silvers on the fly, a technique that is perfect for big northern coho that are hiding off the backside slack currents of leading points in the kelp, waiting to ambush feed on juvenile herring, anchovies and needlefish. I'm with Phil Dawson, the owner of Legacy Lodge uh, behind us here that has some of the finest inshore saltwater fly fishing in the world. Over the last two years, you've been developing spots in these fishing grounds and Bill you're going to guide me today into when you told me about it it's inshore super tight inshore uh, kelp pockets and uh, tell me a little bit about like we're targeting big lazy fish on the fly tell me a little bit about what we're going to experience today. The big coho are in where late July they're, they're, they're coming in um, and what we're going to find is that on the on the flood and ebb tides these big coho are going to hole up. Um, they're going to get it on some protected area. We're going to find them back in the kelp. Um, we're going to throw flies to them and they're going to take it really aggressively. So not typical uh, schooling coho. These are a bigger fish that that you find are just hanging in the kelp, just lazy, not expending energy. Correct. They're just, they're just waiting for the change of tide. They'll come out and feed, so they're just holding, but they're going to take advantage of anything going past. Okay, just predatory. Absolutely, with a hard strike. There's no hesitation in this. So we're going to find them, um, and they'll do their job hitting it. Punch some long lines in, very slow strip, and then set the hook. Set the hook, hang then, on. Hang on. Hang on. Can you share with viewers some of the flies you use to target what we're about to do today? Sure. Um, you know, typically we're just any type of bait pattern. Uh, these have been tied. These are um, clousers. The clouser is a little bit different that, that I like to tie. Um, there's not a lot to it. Right, that's a good looking pattern. It is, but it, it's minimal. It, you know, it, it's sparse. If you look at a lot of fillets, they got a lot more. So it's, it's, it's kind of the uh, needlefish. Um, look at that. Articulated. I run it with with, with the hook back. Little gamma gat. So I see that yep. number six yep. back. Absolutely. And then we'll have. That's sparse too. Yep. It is sparse. And then bait fish patterns. I like that one. This one is not as sparse. You know that. So you're even going to be throwing classic deceivers. Like you this. Can, yep. The deceiver. Correct. Moving it. Um. Right on. Well, this is going to be an absolute blast. Yeah, they're very effective. D don't need a big hook. Um, they just don't hesitate. So we're um, early July here. This is the early fishery and the saltwater fly fishing for salmon. You know, a lot of the guys that are fishing Montana, Idaho, these streams that are fly fishermen, um, they would really love this type of fishing because they're big, powerful fish, calm waters inshore here in Rivers Inlet. Correct. It, it, we're just developing it. it. It's not done here. Um, every time I go over somebody, they, they just can't believe that you can have access to these kind of fish on the fly, on the cast fly, yeah. and do it successfully. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the gear we're going to be using. These are uh, Islander LX 3.8s, triple anodized. The lines we're going to be chucking are uh, a combination of two. One of my favorite, if you follow the series, uh, this is about the, the hottest line out there with the dual loops. 225 grain, 24 foot. Uh, it's got about a 90 foot running line and this thing just, you can shoot this front, back, cast it beautifully. It's a great shooting hand. Yep. And if we got to get down a little faster, a little deeper, a 325 grain in the same line. The leader material on that, you're going to run about 15? Floor uh, for tip it, yep, we'll build a base and we'll run 15 at least. Yep, okay. the suffix 15 for sure. Nine foot tapered leaders and uh, down to 15 if you've got to add tippet. And, and that's about it. 
Now it's your 10th anniversary this year at it Legacy is, yep. Lodge. 10 years. We yeah. just, every year we just keep on developing new stuff and um, the fly fishing is really, really fun. They're just not aware that it's there. It's an experience. Um, if you're in fly fishing, it's just different. They're big, they're powerful. We have easy access to them. They're in calm water um, and they are glad to hit a fly. Well, are you going to take me out and show me this inshore kelp fishing? Let's do it. I'm ready. All right, let's go. Phil, tell me what you were talking about there a little bit about the whole tides, flows, and, and where your headspace is on, you know, why those fish are in those places. I'm always looking for the slack type of water. Um, the ocean's tough for people, but if we look at it as a river and moving water, it's hydrology. You have the water coming by, it's going to compress and it breaks around the rock. We can all visualize that. It creates seams and gaps. They're feeding lanes. So these guys are behind certain points where they can rest. This big fish is not going to survive by spending more energy. So he's looking to where he can sit and let the bait go by him. So we just came off a big tidal push. That guy's sitting up here in the slack. He's packed, he's protected from the kelp, and he's letting it go by. Um, so he's still feeding. Um, it, it's different, it's targeting fish. We can do it through kelp lines if we get towards the slack. We can also take major points. Uh, when the water's really moving, um, it becomes like a stream, and it becomes very active. It concentrates the fish, because they're laying in there, letting the, the bait pass them. Yeah. Um, and they're in their feeding mode. They're very aggressive. Once we get that, um, it's, you know, it's game on. I'll put another one straight right yep. along it this time. Let's check that. Yeah, nice piece of kelp up there. There we go. Nice cast. Oh, where gonna... is he? What? He's gonna, is... he's gonna come out the end of the rocks. That is completely <laughs> so... awesome. That is so cool. I've never seen that before. It just keeps heading towards the shore like that. But it's actually 60 feet the other way. We gotta rip through this kelp with a line. Come on, baby. Come on. What are you doing? What are you doing? Phil, these waters, man, are unbelievable. Aren't they fun? There's no other word for it. Love how he hit that thing. Came out of nowhere. Look at this thing. Wow, it's nice to have someone running the boat, yeah, you man. Get knows what they're doing. That's awesome. See if we can get him out of there. Get him out of there. See where he is? I gotta get around this kelp. There you go. Ugh. Don't try that at home. Yeah, we're free now, right, buddy. Good job. Ooh, back out of here. Ooh. <laughs> yes, it hurts. Oh man, that was awesome. I'll remember that take for a long time. Wow. Now these waters. Are, uh, I just can't believe it, 18, 20, 25 feet of water, shoals to go out just where they should. Beautiful white shoals where you can mark bait. What if this one of these beautiful northerns has moved in? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think you're finished yet. Oh, nice oh, fish. Well, look at the bloody size of it. This thing was waiting in the kelp, man. Yeah. This is an ambush feeder. Oh, my goodness. This fish is over 12. That was really cool being guided into that fish. I enjoyed that immensely. That was fun to watch him blow up on that thing. What a take it was. I love this saltwater fly fishing. It's a lot on gut, too. You know what I mean? Feel. Yeah, it is. 
knuckles. Yeah, and sore knuckles. Oh, come on, baby, yeah. Look at that. See what Phil's doing here? He's actually working the fish out to the deep so we stand more chance of landing it. And they love sparse flies here. Like, I've never seen anything like it. That's a solid 12 pounds. That's a nice fish. Nice. Holy cow, we're only in July here, man. So he's finished here? Oh, no. Oh. Oh, yeah, baby. We got to get this fish just a little closer. I'm with the owner of Legacy Lodge today, Phil Dawson. And we're in the revered waters of Fitzhugh Sound, Calvert Island. Oh my gosh. I don't know what to tell you. This is... You see the size of this fish? It's actually ambushing like a Chinook would. Oh, I've never seen that. Chinook behavior on coho. <sighs> Big northerns up at Rivers Inlet. We're off Calvert Island. Isn't that a bar? Unbelievable. Here you go. Man, what a beautiful buck. Look at that. If you get the chance to come out to Legacy Lodge, Phil, this is a heck of a brace of a fish. Oh, thank you for that incredible battle. What a bar crow. See you, buddy. Nice job, Mark. Oh. Great job on the kelp. Nice job. Bill, you that got was some, impressive. You got an incredible <laughs> lodge here. Incredible. Thank you. It, it's fun. Fly fishing is brand new on it. Yeah. The, the fish are here, they're accessible. Um, and have that kind of a quality of fish on, on the fly rod. We gotta make sure on these flies we're fishing the Duncan loop or perfection loop on that. We're fishing the famous Clouser, Bob Clouser patterns. And we've just gotta make sure at all times to double check. Wow, those stingers are sharp that it's running, it's a sparse fly, and that we have our fluorocarbon back to a stinger that's just in the right position for short grabs. But you always want to make sure that fly is tracking true. Mark, shoot right in front of the, of the kelp bed here. It'll be right in the front, if you can, on that left edge. Perfect, nice cast. For a second, just move it. This truly is inshore saltwater fly it fishing. In right into those kelp pockets. That cast was so nice, that makes me nervous. <laughs> makes me nervous. Whoa, Sally! Can't get used to this in tight. Coming right up. Coming right up. What are you doing? That's crazy. Come on, be a man about it. What are you doing? Oh, there he is. What a beautiful little bay that yep. was, picking that little pocket.
There's two swimming together. You can capture this on the camera. You see them? Watch this other one swimming right with it. You see that? Look at that. Swimming in pairs. Look at that, doing exactly what the other one's doing. White shoals, stunning. Another pretty one picked right out of the pocket. Oh yeah. All right, buddy. Just wanna do something here. There he is. Saltwater fly fishing for coho. Silvers and crystal clear water of Rivers Inlet. Oh, a nice one. <laughs> there we go. Straight out, straight back. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Phil's got the salt fly bug bag, man. There's nothing like this. Look at that. And this is your favorite spot here, double This cut. is my favorite spot. She's just taking a rest. Oh! <laughs> this is my, this is my trained fish here. Yeah, seven this jump. Is, this is a trick circus fish. She's hit great. There are shoulders on that thing. Fish isn't half as tired as I am. <laughs> the clouser is really effective here. Um, you know, it's it's a bait fish pattern, uh, various co colors. Uh, this white one today. Yeah, the the coho like flash in it. Mark show the the chartreuse, the pink. Uh, this is white. That flash is is key. A lot of anglers may not know that Legacy Lodge is nestled just outside or within the Great Bear Rainforest. Uh, that we're in. Can you explain to the viewers a little bit about Rivers Inlet so they know a bit more about it? Much of it. The, the salmon, it is the epicenter of the, of the salmon in British Columbia. There's 20 feeder streams and tributaries in Rivers Inlet um, that are pristine and perfect environment for salmon. So we have 20. Um, the world's greatest run of sockeye was here in Rivers Inlet. In 1968, there was 3.6 million sockeye. It's diminished today to, um, to lower levels due to the logging. But the coho and the Chinook, the Wanak Chinook are here, North America's largest, 50, 60, 70 pounds. Yeah, we're only 20 minutes from that. You're sitting, we're sitting in it right here. But we're at, the Wanak River is right up here. But those 20 tributaries lead to this great fishing. It's this epicenter. It's the highest concentration of salmon producing rivers in British Columbia right here in Rivers Inlet. Of wild salmon. Of wild salmon. Yep, being protected and, and here. So that's the basis of it. Um, the fact that we have protected waters leads to our ability to 
um, not only fish you know, successfully, but gives us the access from boats with flies. Yeah. Yeah, calm waters, um, easy to fish with a fly, um, and building all the time. Our, our, the runs are getting stronger, uh, rivers and lead is getting stronger, but the fishery today is very healthy. Yeah, well, my experience here, this is, uh, in the last 20 years, I've never seen saltwater fly fishing like this. And also the variety of, um, the way of targeting the species, the grounds, the, the shelves, the shoals, the very unique leading points. There's everything a salt fly angler could want. If you're thinking about saltwater fly fishing, this is the place. It's a great place. It's getting better. The program's getting developed and better. It's great access. Big fish, calm waters, it's always a good recipe. Awesome. After pursuing silver salmon on the fly for nearly 20 years, this show brought back memories of the saltwater fly fishing legends on the west coast that always smiled at me when they said, an angler may spend most of their life saltwater fly fishing for salmon, traveling to the finest saltwaters in the world. But what makes this sport challenging and rewarding is that you truly never know all there is or ever stop learning. And that is the saltwater fly fisher's greatest joy. The Legacy Experience has been brought to you in part by Sage, Cortland, Islander Precision Fly Reels, Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing lines.